Structural Analysis of a 3-axis CNC Machine, Part 4. Well, <clears throat> we are still talking about loads on our x-axis and uh, the last load we have on our x-axis after the, all the cutting forces on uh, z, y and x on our tooltip, we have of course the weight of the whole assembly riding on the x-axis, that is uh, parts of the x-axis assembly itself, uh, yeah, all your static parts which hold the thing together, your y-axis, uh, sorry, your z-axis and of course your spindle. And you will see uh, it's basically the same as cutting forces on the z-axis, only uh, this time the force is always going downwards because, yeah, well, <coughs> gravity is going downwards. So, let's dive in. It's the same old. We have uh, with, and I draw that 10 centimeters apart, our upper and lower bearing with uh, the distance being on the Z axis, the distance between upper and lower bearing Right in the middle, uh, we put our center of rotation, which we will use later on for our momentum calculations. And yeah, now you have the whole shebang of your assembly somewhere as a big rectangular blob out here. And this would be your spindle axis. With somehow, and uh, yeah, I do that freestyle now, uh, your whole spindle somewhere here. And that whole shebang has somewhere, and I'm drawing this five centimeters away from uh, my x-axis assembly, would have a center of gravity. And fortunately for our calculations, we don't need to know exactly where that center of gravity is in two dimensions. All we need to know is the distance of our center of gravity. Draw in another axis. The distance of our center of gravity from our experience. So that distance. And yeah, I always give these things a name. So this is on the y-axis. The, yeah, I didn't want to call it center of gravity, COG, so I simply said uh, the weight of my whole X assembly to 
my experience. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, oh, one thing is <laughs> missing, of course, and that is the force, which is going downward. And as always, I draw that about five centimeters long. And I call this force the force from the weight of the x-axis. Yeah, and it's actually pretty simple. We have a momentum that is created uh, by our weight or the force our weight is exerting in this direction and this momentum would be the force times the lever we have so f we oh, sorry our momentum would be like f we x W, sorry, we, I said W, it's W in English. Why W? Hmm. Uh, FWX times uh, YWX2X. Okay, and we have to create our counter momentum by forces trying, so this is trying to turn the whole thing this way. And our counter momentum should try to turn it this way. So we have a counter force here. I will draw in the exact amount, at least in the scale of the drawing later on. And here. So we have two times that force. Should be the same momentum. And this is two times our force to counter that and I call that force x on yeah it's on the y-axis shorthand times zx half yeah we only have half the distance between our two bearings as a lever for each force, but it attacks two times. So yeah, if you remember the uh, set axis, uh, set force stuff, uh, which was basically the same only with another dimension. Yeah, <clears throat> it's it's the same. Nothing new here. So our F, Y, so these forces here would be that term F, W, X times Y, W, X, 2, X divided by that x. So really nothing new here. And of course we have to neutralize the force going downwards. So and that would attack uh, upwards in our z axis. And we have it two times so it's simply F, Y, X, half. Yeah. So in my scale, uh, this is quite simple. This is five centimeters and uh, half of five centimeters is 2.5 centimeters. So draw that in, that's quite easy. Our F 
that and we have the same up here have that and then we have to calculate that one so f y would be our oh, force five centimeters is as always one times this distance which is 0 0.5 over that distance our zx which is one so if y in our drawing would be 0 0.5 which is uh, at least in the drawing so also 2.5 centimeters which is also uh, pretty easy to see Because um, basically, uh, if we look at the from the uh, point of rotation, um, we have three levers of the same length, at least in our uh, in the drawing. So, uh, yeah, of course, if I try to turn the whole thing around with a force of one on that lever. Uh, two times half the force at the two other, other levels uh, should be more than enough then or is exactly uh, the amount of force I need to neutralize the momentum. Yeah <clears throat> and of course I put that uh, to my trusty software link is below uh, as of course uh, links to all the previous episodes uh, if you want to review them or if that's the first one you see so I inserted uh, the whole model into my software we have here the same scale the upper bear, uh, lower bearing the upper X bearing and I put my center of gravity here and we see f1x so here on the x-axis is 0.5 yeah that was the green so to scale 1.2.5 uh, centimeters drawing it this way along and down here at node 5 it's minus 0.5 so 2.5 centimeters in that direction so this is exactly what we expected yeah when you look at my drawing it was 2.5 centimeters or 0.5 newtons or whatever 2.5 centimeters and on our y forces we have uh, basically also they are in reason 0.5 pushing upwards yeah same sign positive going upwards so absolutely no problems at all but if you remember last time where we did the x forces um, 
we stumbled into the little problem that, uh, yeah, sorry, I forgot five centimeters the weight going down from here, just to be complete. Um, last time, uh, as we did the um, X forces on the tool, uh, we noticed because of the so-called indeterminism of the whole system uh, that simply uh, yeah, dividing our forces between upper and lower bearing 50-50 uh, does not always work because yeah <clears throat> I simply yeah, assume here that the downward force is countered by upward forces here of the same amount. But uh, yeah, in the momentum yeah, for the Y forces, uh, I know these have to be the same forces because if I would make one force smaller and the other force bigger, then I would have a resulting force, in that case if I make that one bigger, uh, to the left. So my static system would no longer be in a force equilibrium. But uh, regarding upward force here and here, I could make that smaller and that one bigger and uh, I would still have an equilibrium. That is the whole thing would be in a static state and not move. Our software here says, okay, I'm right with my guess in that case, but um, yeah, I calculated some more cases. <laughs> I put my center of gravity here upwards. And then I get something, I mean, this is extreme, but then I get something for point one of, yeah, you see it, 0.42. And down below here, I get roughly 0.58. Which is a uh, yeah, noticeable difference, but um, yeah, this is also an extreme case. I did over the same thing with center of gravity being here, and then of course it turns around. Uh, at my upper bearing, I have then 0.58 newtons, and down below, I have 0.42 newtons. Um, but anyway, this is an error that is, you know, below for these extreme cases, uh, below 20%. I mean, yeah, if you do mechanical engineering and uh, uh, you trust your calculations uh, when you buy the parts uh, to be within 20%, um, yeah, normally you take a safety factor of two or 100% or at least a safety factor of 50%. Uh, so. Yeah, being here between in the extreme case, uh, yeah, twenty percent. That's okay with. We can ignore that. On that note, I never showed you before, but um, the software can also give me a picture, and that was the case where my center of gravity is up here. Uh, the software can also draw you a picture um, how it views the world. 
the softwares for calculating uh, indeterminate uh, static systems, they actually, yeah, their model is that um, all your structural elements can be deformed. That is, uh, they can either be lengthened, like that one here, this is lengthened, because there is a force pulling on it, or they can be compressed, like uh, the one down here. If a force is pushing, compressing it. And the software can give you also the forces in your individual elements, yeah, if you want to go through that. But uh, the red ones, like the one I showed you before, it has a, well, Zug uh, means pull force, and Druck means basically uh, a pressing, compressing force. That would be the green one, like here. And that's how the software works. <clears throat> so the software in itself, the method is an approximation. But as there are no really, um, you know, exact ma ma mathematical solutions for these indeterminate uh, static systems, um, you have to use approximations. And in our case, as I said, the or was it uh, plus minus 20%? Yeah, we can live with that. It was for the set axis, it, uh, for the set forces on the tool. Um, sorry, for the X forces on the tool, it was, uh, yeah, 100% uh, and therefore we introduced the safety factor of two there. So, summary. Um, yeah, nothing new. You have the formulas. Uh, we have our distance here, uh, the angels of attack, and uh, yeah, our only two important dimensions was the distance of the, not center, but the axis of gravity uh, to our experience. Why? W, X, 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 and uh, the distance between uh, our upper and lower experience, Z, X. And yeah, I won't go over the formulas again. Um, yeah, let's apply that to my little machine. I have planned to build. And there we stumble uh, about a problem when talking about center of gravity. Yeah, you know that drawing already. So I have uh, between my upper and lower bearings, 118 millimeters. Uh, I have between my uh, X bearings and my spindle axis, I have 100 millimeter. And because we will need that uh, between my X bearings and my Z bearings, there are 35 millimeters. But where the hell is my center of gravity, or at least my axis of gravity? Hmm. Um, it's actually not that hard to calculate. There's a easy method, and uh, you can apply this method, uh, that method also to two, uh, two dimensions or three dimensions. And uh, it's kind of a table you need. So you have all your stuff that uh, makes up your machine. For example, I have here my X bearings and uh, yeah. this little EU10. 
SBR10UU thingies and four of them yeah, for upper and the lower bearings they weighed 0.26 kilograms and I have uh, my set bearings with the guide rods yeah and that's why I measured the distance here 35 millimeters to x so here are my guide rods and here are my that's my guide rods and my bearings yeah so these SBR10 thingies yeah. and they come up to 0.760 kilograms and then for the spindle assembly yeah the whole shebang that would fit in here yeah and the holder I uh, yeah I'm not sure which spindle it might be less actually but uh, I went with three kilograms yeah these motors are not light and for the rest of the material yeah what I need here uh, on plates these will be aluminium um, I also said okay 1.5 kilograms okay if you have that you now take uh, the distance to the x-axis so for my bearings here on the x-axis it's zero millimeters for my whole uh, z-axis uh, assembly uh, that would be 35 millimeters my spindle obviously is 100 millimeters out and the rest of the material again I thumbnailed it um, 50 millimeters and that's maybe a little bit too much huh? let's make that also 35 millimeters because yeah about 35 millimeters so and now you take a calculator and you multiply the values the weight times the distance and uh, yeah Oh yeah, vintage German privilege. Uh, that thing is over 30 years old and it's still running with the same batteries. Yeah, I got that one in junior high. I think it was junior high. Yeah, wow. Okay, so... 0.26 times 0 hmm. okay that's 0 so 7 oh sorry clear it 0.76 times 35 is sorry twenty six point six and then three times one hundred okay I didn't need to type that is three hundred and my material bill was 1.5 times 35 that's twenty five point five sorry English it's a dot not a comma 
So, and now you sum that up. So 52.5 plus 300 plus 26.6 and that's 379.1. So what we calculated here is kind of the momentum, yeah, not, uh, yeah, kind of the momentum uh, our different parts have uh, regarding to a lever from our x-axis, our zero point. It's not really a momentum, but uh, yeah, it's a weight which is uh, times a force and it's not a, for, uh, a weight times a distance and it's not a force times a distance. And you can use the same method, we will see, uh, for example, on uh, the z-axis to uh, get the exact height of your center of gravity. Okay, but uh, let's finish that. Then we have to add up all that stuff. So that's in total O, 12, keep 1, 1, 3, 10, 15, keep it 1, and that's 1, to 5. So 5.52. Now we take that and divide that number by 5.52. So basically what we did was uh, yeah, multiply the weights by the distance yeah, which give us uh, a weighted weight, weighted by the distance to our x-axis. And now we divide that through the total of our weight again and so we get uh, the weighted distance of our total weight from the x-axis or our, not center of gravity, but at least the distance of our axis of gravity because we're doing it only in one dimension. So 3, 7, 9, 1 divided by 5.2 uh, 552 is 68 point, yeah, that's 68.7 millimeters. So that's kind of what you expect because uh, the mass, the bulk of the mass is the spindle out here. At 100 millimeters, yeah. So our center uh, center of gravity is a little bit over two thirds of the way out here. So, yeah. The height is not correct, but uh, yeah, about here. And I don't say. 68.7, I simply say 67 millimeters. Our center of gravity. Yeah. And now I can do uh, the calculations, uh, which I will do offline because, uh, yeah, that's a little bit too awkward. So I forgot one little detail, my 
5.52 kilograms times 9.81 is 54 newtons of force. And um, <clears throat> yeah, um, if you use imperial, uh, <laughs> you can of course uh, do that in pounds and then you have directly pound force. Uh, in the metric systems, we have to use this factor uh, to calculate the weight force of anything in earth gravity field. Uh, it's the factor 9.81, which is only valid for this planet and this planet only. So 54 newtons and I used the formulas and did the calculations. So uh, the upward force exerted by the bearings would be 27 newtons. And uh, on our y-axis, the forces, yeah, opposite direction, countering the uh, momentum would be 30 one newtons and then the resulting force on my bearings is 54 newtons. Yeah, here in that direction, uh, yeah, I use the force triangle stuff. Yeah, rewatch the other episodes if you forgot about that. Uh, simply move that arrow up here and that arrow up here and then you make the connection and you got the angle and the length, 54 newtons. Or you can calculate it using the formulas. Uh, I can give you a still shot of them right here. So, and that was the last load component on our experience. As always, I assumed that uh, that's not the case for my little guy, uh, that your whole assembly, Z-axis assembly and the spindle, that's all symmetric. If it's not symmetric uh, in respect to the X-axis, then your forces are also not evenly distributed on your right and left bearings. In our case, uh, oh, I'm just assuming it and I will build it that way. Most machines are built that way. This is symmetric regarding the x-axis. So yeah, I can halve these values for my upper and lower bearings because of course, we have two bearings riding on the upper and the lower side on a guide rod. Yeah, as I said, that was the last component for the x-axis. And in the next episode, uh, we will bring all together in a I guess Excel sheet and uh, we will have uh, some nice diagrams and some uh, possibility to play with the dimensions of the machine and uh, to see what the total forces on our bearings are. So till next time.